So up until now, we've been dealing with fairly simple systems. We're going to go on to consider more complex structures, and in order to do that, we need to have a few tools to, to enable us to solve those systems. The first of those tools that we're going to look at is one called superposition. What superposition says is that for all linear systems, very important uh, caveat that this applies only to linear systems, that the net response caused by two or more loads is the sum of the responses that would have been caused by each of those loads individually. So let's look at that graphically and see what it tells us. Here we have a simple structure and we're going to apply a load A to it. We can determine, whether by calculation or observation, that we will get a displacement X from that load. If we take the same structure and we apply a load B to it, it can be determined uh, that it will cause a displacement Y. This is where superposition kicks in. If we apply the concept of superposition, what it tells us is that if we apply the loads A and B simultaneously, i.e. the sum of load A plus B, that we will get a displacement equal to the sum of the independent displacements from loads A and B. So we get a total displacement of X plus Y. It's a fairly simple concept, easy to see in this picture, but really, really powerful when it comes to solving particularly statically indeterminate problems. So let's look and see how this works out in its detail and how powerful it can be. So what I've shown here is a tension specimen, as you would test in the lab, with a gauge length L and a cross-sectional area of A. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a couple different loads to it independently and see the sum of those products. So keep in mind, remember the caveat, it is only for linear systems. So this is only going to be applicable if we stay below elastic limit uh, of the material so that we are a linear system. So let's start by applying a load P1. We can see the results of that load being applied. We now have a displacement applied to the specimen of delta 1 and a resulting stress and strain within the specimen shown on the graph to the right of sigma 1 and epsilon 1 for the stress and the strain. Now let's apply a load P2. Again, we can see the results uh, of that load application. It causes a further displacement, delta 2, into, in the specimen and a further stress and a further strain of sigma 2 and epsilon 2 to the material. Now we can use superposition to see these obvious calculations that the total displacement is equal to the sum of the two independent displacements, delta 1 and delta 2. Likewise, the total load is the sum of the two independent loads, so PT is equal to P1 plus P2. This should follow in its calculation that if we divide through by the cross-sectional area, we are seeing the total stress, which is a sum uh, of the two independent stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, which is what we have seen on the graph on the right. And then the total strain is equal to the sum of the two independent strains caused by the two independent loads. We can even see how we can apply this using our uh, displacement formula, PL over EA, to see how the individual loads can be used and calculated independently to get delta 1 and delta 2 to arrive at the total displacement. So loads can be broken down into their parts. This disaggregation of the total load into component parts is a simple concept to see here, but in its application is a very powerful tool which we will apply to solving statically indeterminate problems.